Hey, my name is Mario. I'm a product manager here at Datical, and today I'm going to show you one of two ways to use targeted rollback, which is a new Liquibase Pro feature. In this demo, we'll be learning about Rollback 1 Change Set, which gives you the ability to precisely pick a single chain set to undo without having to first roll back all the other unrelated chain sets which you've deployed since then and which you want to keep. So this is a new level of precision in how you manage your database changes. It's really pretty powerful. You can think of it like a get cherry pick for database changes. Uh, this level of precision is not available in Liquibase Community or in Flyway. All right, let's get to it. We'll be using a terminal app and we'll be using an in-memory H2 database just to make things nice and simple. I've already started my in-memory database over here. You can see it has a, a few tables. Um, it has in this case, a gender field on this person's table, and that will be the target of our rollback. So let's go back to our console. So we will first make sure that we are in the right place. So I have CD'd into the directory that has my properties file and my changelog file. And just to give a little more context, a change set is identified by three variables. The uh, change set ID, the change set author, and um, the file path, which in this case is sample.changelog.xml. The change set that created the offending column or the offending field is um, this one. So it has an ID of two, it has an author of other MMC, that's me. And for whatever reason, we want to take this one out, but we do not want to have to roll back our create table and potentially repopulate whatever that table is. We don't want to have to. There, it has another column on it that has a foreign key constraint. We don't want to mess all that up and uh, unroll it unnecessarily. So we are going to target the change set. Um, and yes, I typed super fast there. Using liquid base rollback one change set, change set ID, the change set author, and the change set path. Let me make this a little bigger. Oops. And the change set path. Now when I run this, it is going to say, uh-oh, you have not done all the things that you should do. Because this is a powerful command, we require a force flag. And we give you a little helper command that says, let's look at the SQL before you actually do all that. So I'm going to come back here, and I am going to add SQL to this command. And this is going to output for my inspection and my due diligence the SQL that is going to be run by this command. So we can see here that it's going to do some database locking. Um, it's going to alter this table and drop this column gender. It's going to delete it from the database change log, and then it's going to um, unlock the table. If I, if I look through that, and I think that is what I want to do, let's go back here and um, go back up again, and I'm going to add force. And this will do a little magic. Rollback has been successful. If I come over here and run this command again, this has gone away, but worker uh, works for a company ID and its foreign key has remained. And that's really all there is to it. It's very powerful because it saves time um, by letting you touch only the part of the database that you want to touch and not roll back things that you actually want to keep. Okay, that's all there is to completing a targeted rollback. Remember, you will need three pieces of information, the chain set ID, the chain set author, and the chain set file path. All of these can be found in the changelog file itself or if you have direct access to the database in the database changelog table. All right, hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.